Microorganisms are eating me even faster than I'm eating Malaysian food. So I hope you can hear me. Do uh, I'll wait after somebody if I start losing you at the back? Okay. Back here. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Otherwise, I don't know if you're asleep. <coughs> this talk, I think, is unusual. You know, because. Get introduced as I was just now as being this is a specialist talk about technology. And my pitch is actually that none of us in any aspect of our lives is going to escape technology. It hits everything. Okay? Um, so one of the uh, problems I have with talks like this is that I have to tell you about everything in 30 minutes. This is not possible. So what I've done is I've given you homework. It's in front of you. By the time I finish, if I have established that it's worth your while checking, checking me, right? Basically, it's a list of ways of checking what I say. Okay? Um, I'm, I'm happy. Um, so <clears throat> let me start by uh, giving you a little feel about how fast this technology is moving, okay? In the UK, uh, because I'm mostly retired, I get to chance to browse around and think every day, I see three or four new technical developments which make me think, wow, not to mention a large number that are uh, just hey, interesting, okay? So there are three or four sort of wow things in new technology every day. Um, let me talk about one. Can you shut the door, please? Sorry. I'm trying to talk and my voice is going. Um, sorry about screaming. <laughs> okay. Try and get one of my handouts before you go. Okay. Um, yesterday, one of my friends sent me a link to uh, a website, I go click, and uh, as this video, it's actually on YouTube, and it's a, it's a little robot on a table, and um, Sana is controlling this robot, it says, sit, it says, okay, it's stand, okay, it stands, walk forward, it says, there is danger ahead. Danger the two. There is danger ahead. Walk forward. I will damage myself if I walk forward. Walk forward and I will catch you. He walks forward. As he falls, he catches it. You find that interesting? The heading of the of the uh, thing was robot says no. Nice, isn't it? Step one, he says no. Step two, he trusts the Controller, fascinating, okay? <coughs> so yesterday, uh, that, that's one item already, all right? Uh, yesterday, I saw an, an item about tiny little robots. Stand for this thing. Tiny, 17 grams each. You know, you go the other way, all right? 17 grams each. Six, six of them total weight about a hundred grams, pulling a one thousand eight hundred kilo motor car. All right, six of them, and you can see the car very slowly, but it's moving. All right, um, I don't know about you, but I see something like that and I go, "Wow, that's impressive." Okay, 
two impressive things about it. The first one is where you can get <clears throat> the strength to actually pull. And uh, they've done it by coordinating the legs of these little things, all right? Yeah, you've got six legs each, okay? You're copying insects. The other one is, if you're that light and you're sitting on the surface and you chop and pull, your feet are going to slip. How do they make this peak stick on the ground? Well, basically they have been studying geckos, you know, chichas, so they geckos. And uh, they, they get stuff, I know. So they have copied the same structure of the feet of the geckos onto these things and they are basically stick more than you expect them to stick. Is that thing? Um, that's just two things uh, from recently. As I say, if I can persuade you to watch the technology, um, hopefully you get a lot of fun out of it and you get a feel for the impact on your future. It is very big. It affects everything and that's why I call it a tsunami of change. Okay? Because the, the, uh, the force of it, you can, if you look, if you bother to look, you can see it now. All right? Just coming. So what do you do? You can learn how to run away. I don't think that's possible even, okay? But you must find some coping mechanisms for this. How you choose your careers. I maintain that even if you're doing medicine, law, any career at all, you need to follow the technology because it's going to hit you. Okay? Um, Okay, there is not enough time, so I give out these things uh, so that you can follow up afterwards. Um, when I arrived a couple of weeks ago, I found my wife still alive, you know, and she says there is a full page advertisement in one of the magazines we get from IBM. It says, Out Think Cancer. Okay, there is a very impressive piece of uh, artificial intelligence created by IBM called Watson, and uh, <laughs> there's a huge background. It is really worth your while going and looking on the internet for this, okay? I, I'm doing a shortened version here, um, and what you do, what they've done with Watson is they have been, they said they sent it to medical school, okay? What they did was they fed a whole bunch of uh, uh, medical textbooks in, Okay, medical publications into uh, Watson, and uh, the oncologists are now saying it is better at diagnosing cancers and advising on treatment than human oncologists. Okay, check for yourself. Um, I say to her, "Hey, that's interesting. Take a photo, send it to me. You know, and basically in a couple of minutes, I could make this slide." Um, this guy wrote a book about three years ago uh, called The Second Machine Age. First machine age, you replace muscle with big engines, yeah? You know these engines, now they are tens of thousands of times stronger than you and me, okay? Um, and uh, the second machine age, you replace brain with computer. And of course, if you join the uh, computer with a machine, you have a robot. Yeah. So I'm biased. You already picked this up. Um, it, it actually shocks me. It shocks me the extent to which even young people like you don't know what's going on. When I started making these slides, I was going to say, adults don't know. You can ask your parents, you can ask anybody, they don't know what is going on in technology. All right? Uh, but you do. Now I'm finding that you guys don't know. It's quite extraordinary. I don't know what you do on the internet, but if you follow the technology, you can be surprised at how powerful it is, all right? And it's affecting everything. Um, but you, you uh, by now have guessed that I'm biased. If you hear someone who's biased, you should check them. That's why I gave up the hand up. Um, and um, the other thing is, if you get any sense that the impact I'm talking to you about is going to affect your life, you should check anyway. Yeah? 
If something is important for you, check it. Okay? So, this is a, just a general slide saying, you know, engineering is everywhere. Big airplanes, big ships, um, smartphones. A, a while ago, I, I tried to check who designs the chips in these smartphones, okay? Mobile devices. 80% of them are designed by a company called ARM, based near Cambridge in the UK. And um, one of their senior staff is permanently attached to my department in Southampton. They regularly recruit quite a number of our best students. And so that if you're walking around with any of these mobile devices, there's a good chance some of the design is uh, from my students. Okay. One tends to think about new technologies like this as, oh, Apple brought out a new phone. It's not Apple. Apple is just a fake company name, all right? The guys who created it are engineers who create the new one. The other thing to notice is that there is always a new one. This is an iPhone 4. I'm an old guy. Well, you know, I keep thinking maybe I'll upgrade it. My son has an iPhone 6. Dad, how come your phone is still working? You see how it works. The rate of change is very fast, okay? Three or four years, you want a new one. Better graphics, higher speed, better apps. Okay, so the rate of change is, is pretty great. The top, the top picture on the, on the left is uh, prostheses, you know? So there's, uh, there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. So those are fairly big, big things. Um, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. They are making things called nanopores and other, other devices, which are that kind of size, 10 nanometers, okay? The nanopores are very interesting because you can build them into membranes, you can um, put material on the top of it, and watch the <laughs> molecules go through the nanopore, and because the nanopore changes shape as it goes through, you can identify which molecules are passing through, okay? So that's single molecule analysis. That is uh, engineers already. Uh, this is even more of fairly small scale. At one time, people used to just think what you do is you put transistors and so on on chips. Nowadays, you take chemi chemical labs and put them on chips. So you have enzymes, you have chemicals being pumped around on chips. This is called lab on chip. Uh, this particular one is counting different kinds of uh, cells in your blood used to be done by a human being you know 428 429 horrible okay i would not do that if you paid me a lot of money um but the machine is just doing it much more accurately similar technologies we have made for the national oceanographic center that belongs in my university they tow these things behind their research vessels and they sample sea water well, ocean water okay we tend to think of oceans, big whales and so on, but actually the number of tiny microorganisms in the oceans dominates the ecology, okay? Huge, huge numbers. And you want to count them. You want to see how they're affect, affected by uh, pollution and so on, okay? Um, you guys are looking very serious. Uh, I don't know how this thing works. Anyway, so I'm biased. This guy is even more biased. Anyone recognize him? He's the husband of the Queen of England, the Queen of the United Kingdom. He's the Duke of Edinburgh. He's 95 years old. He said this just before Christmas, so I thought I'm going to steal this because it's very strong, yeah? It says engineering is the only way to make new ideas relevant. Whoa, I like this man. And then everything that wasn't invented by God is invented by an engineer. But it makes me smile anyway, okay? So how is engineering affecting? Uh, global warming, you could blame engineers if you want, all right? But we didn't know it was going to happen. Um, who's going to cure it? Engineers. Nobody else knows how, all right? Um, energy supplies, if you want to do uh, solar energy, who is designing the materials for capturing the solar energy, turning into usable electricity? It's engineers. Uh, clean water, there is an, an interesting machine that you can find on the, on the internet that takes raw sewage in 
and produces drinking water out. And it was paid for development by Bill Gates. And the nice video is Bill Gates taking the water and drinking it. Uh, I think they must have checked it first, all right? Hey, it's quite a thought, isn't it? Okay, raw sewage in. So what do they do? Actually, they heat it up, they evaporate the water, which is then clean. Then what's left behind is dry. So you take that and you burn it in order to evaporate the next lot that's coming. It's not quite self-sustaining, but it's pretty good, okay? Uh, clean water. Who challenges transport, obesity, healthcare? <clears throat> Um, wearable technologies are just growing and growing. You know the Apple Watch? So far, it's only monitoring a limited number of things. But I, I, you know, I want to buy one of these things because if I do, the next one will have even more monitoring. I want to know how healthy I am, okay? Especially now, croaking. Um, so there are these monitoring devices and so on that will help you, uh, you and I um, monitor our own health. Aging, the, the population, the country with the uh, toughest aging problem is Japan. Um, if you just go and check, they have far too many old people. The reason is, it, each family should have 2.2 children, okay, on average, in order to keep the population stable. In Japan, it's 0.8, 0.8. So all these old people out there, who's going to look after them? Guess what? Robots, all right? So in the old folks' homes, they have robots. These robots are very good at picking up elderly people gently. The robot doesn't have a back that will break. Take them to the toilet, bring them back. And here's the interesting thing. More and more, they, are, they have the capacity to talk with the person lying there in the bed. Old people who can't move and things, they really value having somebody to talk to, okay? And uh, these robots are performing that, that function. So aging, big issue, possibly the best way of addressing it is with robots, okay? So we ought to think about how fast this stuff is, is going. The Moore, M-O-O-R-E, was one of the guys who started Intel, and from about 1970, his law has said that the number of components on a, on, a, on a chip doubles every two years. What I'm encouraging you to do is to go Moore's Law in Google. The top hit is Wikipedia. There is quite a nice article about how fast technology is changing overall. Quick summary, the, uh, the, the processing power you get now doubles every 18 months. Okay. This is partly because original processors had one core, now they have eight plus, okay? Uh, the algorithms are more efficient, the memory access is faster, so the whole thing is now working faster than it was, yeah? Doubling every 18 months. So somebody asked me, uh, 15 years, what's gonna happen? 18 months is 1.5 years. Multiply by uh, 15 years, what's going to happen, yeah? 15 years, what's going to happen? 18 months is 1.5 years times 10 is 15 years, yeah? So 10, 2 to the power of 10 is what? Well, it's 1,024, okay? So what we're looking at is you take your handphone, you look at it, and you say, in 15 years' time, this thing is going to be 1,000 times more powerful. No, I cannot guess what it will do, all right? Um, most of what I'm telling you is existing now. This one is just asking you to look a little bit and see what the rate of change is doing. Um, my wife, hey, I saw a review of a book called The Future of the Professions in last October, out new. And basically it's saying every, every profession is affected by, by technology. So I bought it from Amazon. It comes to the house, my wife says, Hey, it's too near Christmas. Why are you buying books? So I said, okay, here's the book. You can give it to me for Christmas. And when she wasn't looking, I downloaded the Kindle edition. Why? Why? Because the rate of change is so fast. Okay? To some extent, I suffer from what is known as FOMO. Do you know what FOMO is? F-O-M-O. No? It's fear of missing out. 
because things changing so fast. You go, hey, I didn't see that. All right. Um, so I look at the stuff. Okay. Here's another thing that happens. Each new invention now becomes available for combining with everything that already exists. So every new one is going to make a huge change because of the combinations yeah, that become available. This is called a combinatorial explosion. So now we have two mechanisms for speeding up. One is Moore's law type stuff. The other one is combinatorial. And the last one is you and I, <clears throat> we see this new technology, we go out and buy it. And the guys who make this stuff go, hey, they bought this one. They'll buy another one in two years' time. So let's make a better one, OK? And so consumer demand is pushing the development. Once again, I buy stuff that I know is not perfect, OK? Last one I went on was Kickstarter, little green dinosaur, which talks to kids. If you're a four-year-old, and hey, by the way, it's connected up to IBM Watson that I was mentioning to you, okay? So it needs an internet connection. You talk to it, it talks back to you, but the connection is to, uh, to Watson, okay? And um, so uh, if a kid asks it, how far is the four-year-old asks it, how far is the moon? It says, it's very far. Okay? And this is a four-year-old, there's no point doing any more than that. But nine-year-old says, how far is the moon? If you get, well, it's about 400,000 kilometers. OK? Um, so you can get more and more refined answers out of this thing as it learns who you are, what you know already. So I'm investing in this thing, partly because I have grandchildren, but partly because I want the technology to improve. I could take a bet with anyone who's interested that in about five years, I ought to be able to say to this little green dinosaur or a variation on it, okay, tell me how you work. You know these things, they work by what's called machine learning. In the old days, you programmed a machine to do one task, it did that task. Now, you program these machines so that they can learn anything. So you show them a whole bunch of stuff, they just learn it, okay? There's a thing called deep learning which goes with it nowadays. I don't like these names. It sounds as though there's some magical thing going on, all right? But what they've got is a separate system which is starting to evaluate what the, uh, the uh, learning algorithms do and say, is this worth it? Which is kind of one layer above, okay? Um, I like these quotes because, especially this one. See, what I'm trying to encourage you to do is to study engineering so that you understand that things like your handphone and everything else that you see around you. And I promise you that when you say, hey, I understand how this thing works, the pleasure is more than just going hit to beautiful handphone. You follow? You get an extra kick out of it. And that's, uh, that's why Cratchit's thing is still magic. It's still magic, even if you know how it's done. This is uh, the motto of the Royal Society. Uh, it is the main reason why we have science and technology the way it is, and its motto basically says, don't believe anybody. So I'm standing here in front of you saying, don't believe me. Is that clear? It's too important. Check it out for yourself. I give you hints with my homework, but uh, check it out for yourself. Wait, stop doing this. There we go. Uh, so you know what it, what it takes to get into engineering. You need maths because in order to understand how the present technology works, you have to understand the theory behind it, yeah? If you understand the theory behind how this one works, which is what you get out of a degree, then you can build a better one. And it's my hope that, that you guys will go out and build better technologies so that you live in a better future and if I'm still alive, me, okay? In a better future. Physics. <coughs> is a good way of kind of matching the maths with the real world. You can do maths abstract, um, but the real fun is if you use it in, in physics, yeah? With physics. Uh, I mean, one of the real superb things recently was uh, the uh, gravitational waves, yeah? Absolutely wonderful. Okay, chemistry is very useful for new materials and so on um, in, in engineering. Um, <laughs> 
New material sounds as though, hey, it's a lump of stuff, all right? But you can make very clever things happen in optical fibers, for example, by doping them with uh, interesting elements, okay? Uh, and chips and so on. I've got no time, um, so let's keep going. Another thing to look for when you're looking for a university is how good is the research? I repeat, I want you guys to create a better future. So you need to go to a place that is creating the future. And then you say, okay, is that how you do it? I can do it. I can tell you stories, but there's no time. Um, oh, by the way, um, this, uh, we run a future world thing so that our students who make new inventions get supported by mentors and even money to uh, exploit their uh, inventions. Okay, this is before they, before they graduate. So look for things like that in the university that you're going to go to, yeah? You can actually get rich. This is a very, I've got no time. Faraday, good physicist, no math. Maxwell takes the results of Faraday and others, writes four equations down, and a wave equation comes out of it. Nobody understands what this wave is. 20 years later, Hertz finds radio waves by accident in his lab. Okay? Marconi says, hey, you mean you can transmit information using radio? Hey, I can make money. So he made money out of it. Um, but they were building these uh, transmitter receivers by guesswork. <coughs> Okay, and except for this guy who worked out the theory of how the circuits work, and when there was a problem, he said four magic words that can be calculated because he knew the equations. So, at the second beginning of the Second World War, both the German Air Force and the British Air Force were using his radios because they were the best, and they were the best because there was a strong theoretical basis. He followed it, so that's the idea. I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, Setting, don't worry about those equations. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what's going on. Five minutes. Uh, this is Baxter. It's a uh, flexible manufacturing robot. All day, you program the robot to do one task, that's all. This thing, you show it a, a human being doing a task, and it will do it. Take it around the other end of the uh, factory, show it a different task, it'll do it. It learns by watching, okay? And it's going to grow. This is an Australian bricklaying robot. You give it a plan of a house, and it builds the house. Two days later, you come back, it built it. This is a 3D printed house, and of course, in China, there's a giant version that prints 10 houses in 24 hours. Um, interesting, isn't it? 3D printing is huge. You can make tiny things with 3D printers, parts of human body, okay? And this is just a house. Example. This is Pepper. There's a descendant of Pepper that's even cheaper. It is supposed to be able to read human emotions. All right? So you can tell whether you're happy or sad or whatever it is and uh, handle you um, accordingly. Uh, they, it originally, it only spoke Japanese, but now it's been connected up to Watson and speaks English and uh, some other languages. Uh, okay. Another one about Watson has a UK app for personal trainers so that they will make, make your fit, fitness better, faster. Okay, monitoring it. Uh, this is a robot surgeon. Robot surgeons are uh, now less collateral damage, less bleeding, the wounds heal faster. Uh, this is a robot, little robot that pretends to have diabetes for three or four years old with diabetes. So that you don't have to explain in complicated language to a three or four year old. They say, you look for this. And the child knows how to report diabetic symptoms, okay? This is a robot pharmacy. In recent tests, one of these 350,000 doses, zero errors. The normal human rate is 3%. And of course, they're finishing the thing off so that a robot now will take the medication from here go up to the ward, check that it is the right medication for the right patient at the right time. Okay, so you can see that the errors are uh, going to disappear. This one is perhaps the most startling. One of the things about I, uh, IBM Watson is that it can handle natural language, okay? Um, and so they've been feeding case law in, into Watson. I've got a drink. So that a lawyer wanting to go to court needs cases to take in, for example, and they are saying this thing works better than the human paralegals, 
In fact, it's so good it could do simple cases by itself. Journalism, there are short articles happening. I, this is funny. Uh, 20 years ago, when they were putting autopilots in airplanes, there was a question, how many pilots do you need, right? And the answer was one pilot and a dog. The job of the pilot is to feed the dog. The job of the dog is to bite the pilot if he touches any of the controls. Okay, this is the uh, AlphaGo. I don't know if you picked it up on the news in the last week, but it just beat the human champion. Three games and then the human champion won one, and I'm not sure what the state of the last one is, okay? Who won the last one? You won the first one, and then the robot learns. Tell me what the last result is. Don't give me a long answer. Who won the last game? Because I know that the robot won three, and then the humans, these had all won one. So that's four out of five. What happened the fifth one? Robot. The bringing thing learns, okay? It beat the European champion only a few weeks ago. The European champion was ranked 600. But by playing this machine extra, it is now he is now ranked 300. We are practicing with this wretched machine, okay? Uh, and it's using what's called deep learning, which I was telling you about. Uh, and they make films of it. This thing, Hawking and Elon Musk and so on are getting worried because if these machines start actually saying, hey, I know this, you know that, let us swap information. If they start doing this systematically at gigabits per second, they're going to get very clever, very fast indeed, okay? Uh, and uh, what are we going to do about it, basically? Driverless cars all around. This is the best way to predict the future, is to invent it, be an engineer. But first understand, uh, this is just examples. I've got no time. I think the engineers, one of the nice things that I find is that they work very nicely in, in groups to create new things, okay? So you get a lot of friendly support from your fellow engineers. This is my first professor of computing. He says that the technology is going to make huge changes and we should make sure that it's not catastrophic, okay? There it is, not catastrophic. So he says that's why he's there. And then he goes, okay, okay, I'll be honest, it's fun. Why is fun important? Fun is important because you are intelligent. If you have fun doing engineering, you can create a better future. That's it. Whew. Half an hour. Is that okay? I'm told that that's if you now have to go. Is that right? If you don't no, have to I, go. It would be nice if we could ask a few questions. I, I'm willing to stay as long as you want me to. Do we have any questions? I know we had some questions beforehand, otherwise, I might just. <coughs> Do you want me to ask a few of the questions I've heard from the previous few days? Go for it. Okay. A couple of the easy questions. Number one, um, some students are obviously interested in computer science and computing and engineering, but their maths is a little bit limited. Are there courses that are easier than others on the maths front? Well, I think you can do most engineering in what's called an applied vocational way. You take what is invented by somebody else, but you're good at using it, okay? The other end, if the theory is strong, you can understand what is going on now and you can build a new and better one, okay? So we are training our students at Southampton in order to create the future. That's why people like Arm and others grab our students. The employment from, from my department is about 100%, all our students, because they know they can create the future. As I said, the, the main companies cannot stay still. If Apple stops manufacturing a new one, Huawei and Samsung will kill Apple. There will be no Apple in one week, one year. And who is pushing this technology forward? It's engineers, young engineers, okay? Um, is that a fair answer? Yes, um, fair answer. The danger, of course, is that more and more, it's the it's been create will be important. Because if all you're saying is I can use it, a robot can use it. I, I, I'm being very harsh, all right? But I think you ought to think about it. I don't know what the lifespan is of normal jobs anymore. I just showed you uh, medical things being replaced, uh, legal things being replaced. Okay. Whose career is safe? The book I was telling you about that my, my wife took off me to give me as a Christmas present um, surveys pretty much all the professions. 
And whoever you are, whatever you want to do in your life, you ought to look at the rate of change that technology is uh, doing to humanity. It really is like a big tsunami, and it's getting bigger and stronger. Sorry. Another one, another one. Yeah, did you have a question? No, it's just stretching. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me ask, let me ask if any of you. Are you going to look at my homework, yes or no? If it's yes, if you're at that. Okay, one of you, one of you, you look at the Tell me, um, <coughs> why it's worth why? It technology, you're, you're, you're giving me my own words back, which is very good. It, it's uh, just changing everything. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really, when I started off, I didn't want to say harsh things to young people, right? But when I find that you guys don't know what's going on, and, and uh, adults don't know what's going on, I wrote twice to my member of parliament saying, hey, wake up. This is not me. I'm just looking. I'm not creating any of this. It's, you know, anyone can look. All right. Um, what is going on? Why? Why is it? So uh, <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to look. Um, but it's going to hit everybody. So it, it really is worthwhile watching, and it's fun. I enjoy it. Every day, I get two or three nights and just do things to see. Uh, maybe you steal a quarter of an hour from your video games time and, and chase hey, new technology like that. I'm afraid that really isn't the time we've got for because it's uh, the back of frustration time. Thank you very much. Let's all give a big hand. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. I hope that wasn't too harsh.